I'm Arnold Solin, and I'm here with Ella and Prakar to present our work Scalable Inference in SDEs by Direct Matching of the focke planck kolmogorov equation. In this paper, we advocate alternative views to solving SDEs in machine learning. Simulation-based techniques, such as variants of stochastic runge kutta like the Euler-Maruyama method here, are the de facto approach for inference with stochastic differential equations in machine learning. These methods are general purpose and can be used with many types of non-parametric and parametric SD models, such as neural SDs. However, stochastic runge kutta relies on the use of sampling schemes that can be inefficient in high dimensions. We address this issue by revisiting the classical SD literature and derive direct approximations to the typically intractable focke planck kolmogorov equation by matching moments. We show how this workflow is handy, fast, and scales well to high dimensional latent spaces. The typical workflow in latent SD models is that you have some sort of observation space, you model dynamics in some sort of latent space, and then you map back to predict things in the observation space. The model for the dynamics is typically captured by a ordinary or stochastic differential equation. That models change in the latent space. We look at the stochastic solution in the latent space and match moments there in order to then be able to map the stochastic behavior in the latent space to uncertainty in the prediction space. The first part of the model uh, paper is concerned with uh, defining dynamics in handy ways. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, this is often done in terms of a differential equation. In this model here, the model actually that defines the dynamical behavior is the velocity field function v here, parameterized by some parameters theta. Typically, in order to capture stochastic behavior in the dynamics, that function is replaced with a stochastic function, such as a Gaussian process or um, Bayesian neural network or such. However, the theory for handling this type of random ordinary differential equations is awkward. That is why we map these models to the convenient Ito type of SDEs for which there is plenty of theory available. For example, in our examples, we model the drift and diffusion in terms of those process priors that allow specifying things such as divergence freeness or curve freeness in latent vector space. The second part of the paper is dedicated to solving general ITO SDEs in machine learning. As you might know, SDEs are a bit peculiar. So you can think of an SDE as a different equation that gives you a different solution each time you attempt to solve it. And this gives rise to the so-called so strong or pathwise solutions. This is one of the basic solution concepts for SDEs. Um, sometimes this is a very relevant solution concept if you're actually interested in draws of the behavior of the SDE. And in this case, typically the go-to solutions are based on stochastic runge kutta methods. However, you need to use a very small step size in order to guarantee that you actually simulate with your approximative simulator uh, draws that resemble the true behavior of a random draw from an SDE. For example, for the Oromariyama method, which is very much used in machine learning, that step size might need to be quite big, uh, small. However, there are alternative, weaker concepts of solving SDEs. 
And quite often we are not interested in single solution trajectories, but rather kind of aggregates over all solutions, or at least many solutions. And still you can use simulation, such as Sarcastic Romicuta for this, which basically means that you try to characterize the space and time dependent probability distribution by sampling. Here, luckily, the requirements are not as strong as for the strong order convergence, and even a slightly bigger step size might be decent. However, if you are interested in the statistical properties of the solution trajectories, why sample draws in the first place? The Ito SD theory uh, contains handy tools for dealing with these solution contests, uh, concepts. The focke planck kolmogoro partial differential equation describes the evolution of the probability function of the solution trajectories. However, it's a bit awkward as well, because this is hard, like hardly ever actually solvable in closed form. What we do is that we formulate the focke planck kolmogoro equation as an evolution equation and match the moments for that evolution. That is, we do Gaussian approximations to capture the first two moments. We can do that by moment matching um, and write down the dynamical evolution equations for the first and second moment of the probability function. That leads to this set of ordinary differential equations. The integrals are still intractable, but we solve those by using linearization and quadrature, which gives rise to two different approaches. Here you can see an example where on the far left, you see um, the actual solution to the focke planck kolmogorov equation, shows the probability mass spreading as you go. In the middle, you see the Orimaruyama trajectories or like the points, how they evolve. And on the far right, you see our approximations in terms of linearization in blue, like mode seeking, and moment matching in red. The dashed line represents the exact Gaussian fit to the problem. Next, I hand over to Ella. So why consider weak solution concepts? Uh, they have lower computational costs compared to sampling methods, in high, especially in high dimensional problems, because in high dimensions, it's common to need uh, multiple trajectories to uh, represent the distribution well, meaning that you need, well, more, more computational time. Then, for example, for linearized approximation, um, only a single evaluation of the drift and diffusion functions and the Jacobian of the drift are required, so that's quite fast. And then for assumed density models, the computational complexity depends on the method of choice. For example, um, for third order cubature method, uh, only OD function evaluations are required. And you saw third order cubature method in one of the videos in the earlier slides. So to see how uh, the computational cost scale in practice, we um, try the approximations on the Benesh SDE. The Benesh SDE is a nonlinear SDE, so the approximations won't be uh, won't be perfect. So we, in practice, we ran the approximations, checked their accuracy, and then found the number of all the Mariama trajectories needed to match that. So here you can see uh, for first the all the Mariama, then the moment matching, and then the linearization results. So as you can see, linearization is a lot faster than the other methods. Um, both on GPU and CPU, and moment matching tends to be 
a bit slower than OMR Yama in high dimensional problems. And then we also did a deep dive to dimension 200 to see uh, how does the number of OMR Yama traje trajectories impact runtime. So for reference, here you see the linearization, the moment matching method, and finally OMR Yama, and looks like it's around 14 seconds at 400 trajectories and around nine seconds for 50 trajectories. Uh, next, Prakara will go through some experimental details. Thanks, Ella. Next, we showcase the capability of the proposed methods on two experiments, rotating MNIST and motion capture. The goal for the rotating MNIST is to learn the latent dynamics of the rotating MNIST digit in this experiment, digit three. The digit is uniformly rotated in 64 angles. The video showcases the sample from the data set where on the left, we can see the digit and on the right, the latent trajectory. For this experiment, the GPHD latent model is trained using independent RBF kernels over different latent dimensions. During inference, we feed one observation and let it follow the learned dynamics. As a baseline, we used 1000 Euler Mariama trajectories and we compare it against more matching and linearization inference scheme as discussed earlier in the presentation. This slide shows the qualitative results where we compare the moment matching output and the linearization output with the baseline. The top row shows the mean of the prediction, whereas the second row shows the standard deviation. On the left, we can see the latent trajectory of all these methods. The quantitative results are presented in the paper. Now moving to motion capture dataset. The goal for the motion capture dataset is we are given first three observations and when then we want to predict the future sensor data. For this experiment, the HD model has neural networks both for the drift and the diffusion term. And instead of sampling trajectories, we use linearization approximation and assume density models to evaluate the future steps. On the right, we can see the test MSC where we are comparable with other state-of-the-art methods. As a recap, there's not this one solution concept to be considered for SDs in machine learning. Weaker solution are sometimes stronger, faster, and it depends a lot on the use case. Just considering the first moments can be good, especially if the problem is high dimensional or if you cannot leverage parallelization. In this presentation, we discuss few methods. However, there are more exciting methods which are presented in this book, Applied Stochastic Differential Equations by Simo Sarka and Arno Solin. We encourage viewers to go through this book and deep dive into the world of SDs. Thank you.